Hi guys, it's Monday, March 7th, and here is the daily reading today. The first one is Genesis chapter 19. 19. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them, and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and enter his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them? Really? Okay. Lot went outside to meet him, meet them, and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do what, they, do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the project, protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot, Lot, Lot back in the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness so they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-laws, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs with you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, and the angels urged Lot, saying, "Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, and you will be swept, or you will be swept away when the city is punished." When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and the two daughters and led them out safely out of the city. For the Lord was merciful. As soon as they had brought them out. One of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well, I will grant this request to him. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. By this time, Lot reached out to Zor, and the son And the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down, burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he had overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and he became a pillar of salt. She became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah toward all the land of the plain. 
and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around here to give us a child, as the custom of all the earth, let's get our father to drink wine and sleep with him and preserve our family line to our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she laid down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she laid down and when she got up. So both Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is a, the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son. She named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. Okay, so and then it's Genesis 20, verses 1 through 18. Abraham and Abimelech. Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev, and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while they stayed in Gerir. And there Abraham said to his wife Sarah, She is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Abimelech, Abimelech had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say, he is my brother? I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to him in a dream, yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience, so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I did not let you touch her. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pay for you, and you will live. Pray for you, and he will you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned his officials, and when he told them all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham in and said, What have you done to us? How have I wronged you that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should have never been done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What was your reason for this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, There is surely no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother, she became, and she became my wife. And when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, This is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, He is my brother. Then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and the male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham she, and returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech, said, My land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. And Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech for his wife and his female slaves so they could have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving 
because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Matthew 7, 24 to 29. The wise, foolish builders, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the, that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice. It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings, because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. In Matthew 8, verse 1 through 22. Okay. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he had cleansed, he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift of Moses' command as a testimony to him. The Faith of the Centurion when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centron came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centron replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man of under authority with the soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centron, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. Jesus heals many. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and he got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases, the cost of following Jesus. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake, then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. And then Psalm... 7, one through 9. Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me, or they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. Lord my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my ally with evil or without cause, have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life 
to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God, decree the justice. Let the assembled peoples gather around you and while you sit enthroned over them on high. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. Bring an end to the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. You, the righteous God, who probes minds and hearts. And that is today's reading. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.